In this video, we are going to discuss some problems that uh, happen when we implement the delta modulation. The topic that we are going to discuss now is called threshold of coding and slope overload. Threshold of coding is basically the step size that we use uh, when we reconstruct the signal uh, at, the, uh, at the receiver or also at when we do the estimation at the transmitter, the signal m hat q of t. This is the step size by which we go up or we go down, which is the same as related to the level e and minus e. So we go up, when we use the integrator, we go up by e multiplied by the length of the pulse, or we go down by negative e multiplied by the length of the pulse. This is the step size. Why would the step size cause a problem? From the name slope overload, the problem happens when the slope of the signal is very high, whether in the positive side or in the negative side. So if the signal goes up, with a very high slope like this and then you try to estimate this signal by sending a positive pulse so you go up but you can't catch the signal you go up again but you can't catch the signal you go up again you can't catch the signal you go up and you will see that if the slope of the signal is very high and your step size doesn't correspond to this high slope there will be a big divergence between the original signal and the estimated signal, right? Because the step size cannot catch the original signal. You try to catch it, but the step size doesn't allow you to do that. It's not enough to do that, right? Same thing happens when the signal goes down quickly, like this. And then you take a sample, you find that uh, you need to send the negative pulse, you send the negative pulse, and you find that you need to send another negative pulse, you send the negative pulse, Pulse, but you cannot catch the signal, you send another negative pulse, another negative pulse. So you will find that there will be a divergence, a big divergence, a big error between the original signal and the estimation of the signal. So even at the receiver, when you try to estimate the signal and you smooth it down, this is probably what you will get. You will get a signal that's completely different from the original signal. This is because the step size is small, it's not enough to uh, to catch the signal when its slope is highly positive or highly negative. It, it goes up quickly or it goes down quickly, right? So you find that if the slope is very high of the original signal or very low, this problem will happen. This is what we call slope overload. You can solve this problem by increasing the step size. We can do that. We can increase the step size, and in this case, if we increase the step size, you will find that huh, with one step you can catch your signal. You can also increase the step size while going down, so you will find that by one step you can catch your signal, like this. But if you increase the step size, it will cause another problem, which is called granular noise. What's the granular noise? Assume that you increase the step size to solve this slope overload problem but at some parts the signal doesn't change very much the signal is almost constant and you increase the step size so the step size is high so you will keep oscillating with a high amplitude while the signal is almost constant so this is what we call granular noise granular noise means that the signal doesn't change almost doesn't change or it has it has only small change but the estimation is changing very much up, down, up, down with a very high oscillation or very high ripple. Even if you smooth down this ripple at the, at the uh, receiver, still, how do you smooth down the ripple at the receiver? Use a capacitor. So the capacitor is going to charge and discharge. So the capacitor is going to do something like this charge, charge and discharge, charge and discharge, right? So still, the oscillations are going to be high. Although the original signal doesn't change very much, it's almost constant, right? So if you increase the step size, there will be a problem of granular noise. And if you reduce the step size, of course, the granular noise can be reduced by reducing the step size. But if you reduce the step size, you will have a problem of slope overload. So you can solve the slope overload by increasing the step size. And you in order to solve the granular noise, you need small step size. So these two problems, if you solve one of them, you will increase the other problem.
So these two problems are, they have a conflict. One of them needs the set size to be large and the other one needs to be small. How to solve this? They usually solve this problem or these two problems together. They solve them using something called adaptive delta modulation. Adaptive delta modulation. What's adaptive delta modulation? Adaptive delta modulation basically Modulation. In adaptive delta modulation, ADM, basically they change the step size depending on depending on whether the signal has high slope or low slope. If the signal is going up with a high slope, they increase the step size. If the signal is going smooth with a very small slope, uh, they reduce the step size. But in order to do that, we need both the transmitter and receiver to know whether the signal it has a high slope or a small slope, right? Both of them, they should know because they should agree on the step size. The transmitter and receiver, they should agree. They should have an agreement on the step size so that the receiver can reconstruct the signal again using the same step size used at the transmitter. So both the transmitter and receiver, they should know exactly, they should agree on a step size. So some of your colleagues in the class, they told me, okay, what we can do is we'll look at M, M of T and, uh, and then D of T will give you uh, an idea about the slope of the signal. If the D of T or M of T is increasing quickly, it has high slope, then you can, you can increase the step size. If the slope of M of T has a, a, a small value, then you reduce the step size. Some of your colleagues said that. This is a nice idea, it's a very good idea, but we can apply it only at the transmitter because the receiver doesn't have any information about M of T. The receiver actually is trying to get M of T, right? So the receiver doesn't have M of T, so the receiver doesn't know what is the slope of M of T and hence the receiver doesn't know when the step size is going to increase or decrease. So this idea is good, but uh, unfortunately we cannot apply it because only the transmitter knows M of T and knows it knows whether that signal is increasing with a high slope or not. So we need something that both the transmitter and receiver they can identify. So the idea here is they said, okay, what we do is the transmitter and receiver they will agree that if there is a sequence of ones, binary ones transmitted with a certain number behind each other, this means what? If you have a long sequence of ones, this means that you are trying to catch the signal, but you can't. So you transmit one, binary one, positive pulse. You try to catch the signal, but you can't. You try to catch the signal, but you can't. And so on. So if you have a sequence of ones, long sequence of ones behind each other, consecutive sequence of ones, long consecutive sequence of ones, this means that you are trying to catch the signal, but you can't. This means that the signal, to give you a hint, that the signal is going up with a high slope. So the transmitter and receiver, they can agree that if we receive, for example, five ones consecutive, we are going to increase the step size by doubling it. This is an agreement between the transmitter and receiver. If you receive, if I transmit five ones and you receive five ones, double the step size. Same thing for going down. If you receive a long sequence of zeros, this means what? Binary zeros. This means you are transmitting negative pulse, negative pulse, negative pulse, and you cannot catch negative pulse, negative pulse, negative pulse, and you cannot catch the signal. So the transmitter and receiver can agree that if you receive a certain number of zeros, consecutive zeros, let's say five zeros we can double the step size so the receiver once it receives five zeros and the transmitter also they will double the step size to catch the signal so this is an agreement between the transmitter and receiver so the transmitter and receiver from the sequence of ones they can both they can both of them they can uh, agree that we are going to double the step size after a certain number of ones or a certain number of zeros this is, this is for the slope overload. What about the granular noise? 
We can do the same thing for the granular noise, but in the granular noise, if the signal has small slope, what do you expect to see? If the signal, if the original signal has small slope, what you expect to see is you expect that you are going to transmit a positive pulse, you go up, and then you go down, then you go up, you go down, up, down. So you expect to see one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. So the transmitter and receiver, they can agree that if we have a long sequence of one zero, one zero, one zero, this means that this pattern is happening. You are oscillating around the original signal, and in this case, reduce the step size. You can reduce the step size. Both of them, they are going to reduce the step size. So this is adaptive delta modulation. A quick idea or a general idea about adaptive delta modulation is that if you have a long sequence of ones, both the transmitter and receiver, they agree that we are going to increase that step size. Same thing, if you have a long sequence of zeros, this means that you cannot catch the signal, and the signal, the original signal is going down with a, a high slope in the negative side, of course, okay, and you increase the step size. If you have a long sequence of one zero, one zero, alternating ones and zeros, then this means that you are oscillating around the signal and the signal actually, the original signal has a small slope, then you can reduce that state size and in this case you are going to reduce, you are going to reduce the variations around the signal. So this is basically adaptive delta modulation. The next video I'm going to discuss another practical problem that happens with the delta modulation. See you in the next video.